All aboard! Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Guess you got to ride part of the journey up front. Hey, Jerry. Hello. This is so exciting. I've never been in the front of a train before. It's a heavy door. This is where it all happens. I can't help but notice the horn button. Yes, you want to blow the horn? Can I do the honours? Yes. Brilliant. I've always wanted to do this. I feel like I should be doing that. Here we go. And we're off, all on my command. I love that feeling. I've got this train underway. The trains are massive, so we split... C.co.uk slash The One Show. Uh, great film, this. Claire, Claire Balding's been doing a series for The One Show on remarkable animals, and her latest contender must be the smartest of them all. A golden retriever who knows when his owner is having an epileptic fit before she does. This is my dog, Archie. Now, naturally, I think he's pretty special, but I'm afraid he's nothing compared to the golden retriever that I'm about to meet. Come and see why Tony and her dog, AJ, are so extraordinary. Tony Brown Griffin suffers from severe epilepsy and is visually impaired. Her epilepsy was so bad, she was medically retired at the age of 22, and she'd given up any idea of having a family. Today, things couldn't be more different. Wash. Now that Thank is you. what I call a useful dog. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, AJ. Wash. Now, th this isn't the only thing he does by any means, is it? No, he's primarily a seizure alert dog for epilepsy. Um, these are add-on tasks that he does to make my life a little bit easier. Wash. Does he sort colours from whites? He's not very good at colours. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when you're about to have a seizure? 40 minutes prior to a major seizure, AJ will come up and start licking my left hand quite obsessively. If he was to go on to start nosing it and pouring at me, then it would be a minor seizure. But if he continues to look at it, then it's going to be a major seizure. Now, my dog occasionally licks my hand. How is the way AJ licks you different to affection? AJ, when he's alerting, he licks almost as if it's been painted with cream cheese or butter. He is obsessed. And if I take it away, he's seeking it out and nudging me. And he's very insistent. It's, it's very easy to see the difference between him just licking at my hand and alerting. And do you have any idea what it is that's changing in your body that, that he picks up on? I haven't got a clue. The first thing I would know if I didn't have a seizure alert dog is coming round on the floor. I really haven't got a clue. Scientists still don't know exactly how dogs predict seizures, but they may be responding to clues like facial expression, muscle tension or perspiration. And in terms of timing, you've said 40 minutes before. Yeah. Is that exact? Um, he's, he's near a sort of 41 and a bit minutes, but he's 100% accurate to the time. You can almost set your clock and say, right, I've got X number of minutes left and count down. And what happens then in the next 41 and a half minutes? I normally make sure the children are safe if they're out with me. If I'm out somewhere, then I try to get home if I'm near enough. If I'm at home, then I get Miriam to sleep or in a, her bedroom, which is safe, and then settle down myself and wait for the seizure. AJ is trained to help Tony in all sorts of ways if she becomes unable to move. Go find me blue. AJ's trained to fetch me the phone so that I can call for help or he'll also get things for me like my inhaler or a medicine pack. So it's only to do things if you are incapable of doing them? Yes. Come. Good luck. Give. Well Good done. boy. Did you ever think that there was going to be a problem having children at all? There wasn't really going to be any option of having children. I had such severe epilepsy that the amount of drugs I was on would have damaged the baby during being carried if I didn't fall and damage her. So we had got used to the idea that we wouldn't have children. When you went to hospital to have Mimi, what, what happened to AJ? He came with me. He spent three weeks in the hospital in London with me and was an absolute superstar. But he was at my side when I delivered her. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for dogs. Do you know that? You wouldn't be here <laughs> if it wasn't for him. So he hasn't just changed bits of your life. He has completely changed your life. It's only something that somebody that suffers from epilepsy can understand is the not knowing when a seizure will strike. You know, the fact that it goes along with heavy falls and injuries. I was in and out of hospital departments, they knew me by first name, and it's, oh, it's only Tony again. I haven't seen them for years. Just every aspect of my life is so much easier. 
Okay, off you go. Off you go. It's important, is it, to let him just go wild and have a day off? Yes, he has lots of regular good fun dog walks. I think it's important for him to let his hair down and be a dog. <laughs> go find it then, go find it. I could have only dreamed of the life that I live now. Everything for me has changed in so many ways. I didn't even dare think that I'd have the independence that I've got now. Uh, I've just got complete freedom. It's an absolutely remarkable uh, story. Like, you worked with dogs, didn't you, in the Queen film? Have you become fond of corgis? I love dogs, all dogs, actually. And, the, you know, stories like that just I find so moving. And, yeah. and I think we so underestimate animals. There you general. are with your, with your dogs. Yes, there. my naughty corgis. Did I you love become them. attached to them? I love them. I could see why the Queen loved them, absolutely. Mm. They're just so mischievous and, you know, and full of character and yeah. curious about everything. Yeah. I, I thought they were absolutely Fantastic. great. Yeah. Just something we haven't mentioned is.